It is now time for another Q&A brought to you by Candid. If you'd like to participate in the next Q&A, you can download the Candid app on iOS or Android. So let's go ahead and jump into the questions. In order to forward the progressive movement, should we reform the Democratic Party, join the Green Party, or create a new party? I think that we need to execute all of these goals simultaneously because it's all about uh, getting the policies implemented that we want. And I think that these will kind of have a domino effect if we try to create a new party, if we join the Green Party. These will all pressure the Democratic Party as well. And I think that whatever gets us the progressive policies that we want, it's going to be a win-win. So I think we should do all of these strategies at the same time. Mike, I still can't help but feel betrayed by the DNC's ruthless election fraud. Is there any good way to cope with this resentment? I feel the same way, honestly. And look, every once in a while, I'll just feel really down and honestly depressed when I think about just everything that went on and how I, I kind of feel like the world's against me when I know that's not the case because I have thousands of viewers that agree with me and, you know, they subscribe because I'm kind of expressing the uh, disgust that I have with the American political system and the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. But, you know, the way that you cope with this is you really have to check out from politics every once in a while. You know, I, I, I don't log on to Twitter. I don't look at YouTube videos about politics. I just play video games. I try to you know, disengage because it's really important that throughout this toxic political atmosphere, we maintain, you know, good mental health. We don't want to get bogged down by this. We don't want it to affect our mood or our job performance or our personal life. So I think that we just have to disengage once in a while. You have to step back and realize that change is tough. And anyone who accomplished something great before us, they felt the same thing we're feeling now. So it's only temporary. Even though we're defeated now, we will win in the future. Mike, to what degree, if any, do you support feminism? Well, I've always considered myself a feminist, but when I started the podcast, I realized that that's a term that's become a lot more controversial. People will tell me, you know, why don't you identify as a gender egalitarian instead? And look, I don't necessarily care about the label. If you'd prefer me refer to myself as a gender egalitarian, that's fine. But the way I see feminism is that it's about gender equality. It's about both genders being treated equally, uh, you know, not using kid gloves on one gender over another. It's just pure equality, socially, economically, everything. So, you know, that's the way I see it. So by that definition, I do consider myself a feminist. Now, it is the case that, you know, feminism, as well as liberalism in general, has been perverted to a degree by the social justice warrior movement. But with that being said, that only constitutes a relatively small portion of of, you know, of the country. And even though the Democrats try to misuse identity politics, I think that feminism is still really important, particularly when you look at countries like Saudi Arabia and other Middle Eastern, North African countries. We need feminism to help fight against these really horrible policies that just harm women in so many countries. So I do consider myself a feminist, but I mean, it, it, it's, it seems like it's a really toxic term. And that honestly took me by surprise because I'm someone who has a political science researcher. I wrote about feminism and studied about feminism, uh, not necessarily American feminism, more so Middle Eastern feminism, because I find it really fascinating uh, and honestly inspiring. But look, yeah, I, I consider myself a feminist. So I mean, I don't really care so much about the label so much as I care about just policy and equality. So that's, that's kind of my take on it. Mike, which blue states do you think might be easier to turn green? I have a feeling New York and California are going to be harder, but states like Oregon, Washington State, Maine, Massachusetts, Vermont, and Hawaii might be easier. I agree. I'd say living in Oregon, you know, us as well as Washington, our neighbor, will be more inclined to turn green, but it will be difficult for these bigger states like California and New York with very large populations to turn green. So I'd say let's focus there first, uh, you know, Oregon and Washington, but do what you can in your state to further progress the Green Party. I watched Alex Jones last night and he said that the silent majority is opposed to gay marriage. Funny because I'm a country bumpkin and every single person I know doesn't care. Just saying, and I think the polls prove that America has mostly gotten past that. I agree with you and anything that Alex Jones says is almost guaranteed to be false or fake. He's proven that he's a big fraud. He sells these scam uh, medical supplements that are supposed to help you. He's a phony. He's a conspiracy theorist. And he's someone that I would highly discourage you from watching. Please don't watch Alex Jones.
Sorry, Mike, I'm in a swing state and there's no way I could ever, in good conscience, vote for Trump or Shillery. We must vote for the greater good, not the lesser evil. I'm sticking by my morals on this one. I think that's great. And I think the implication here by saying, sorry, Mike, it, you know, you think that I'm inclined to disagree with this, but I don't disagree with this. Uh, in the last week's episode, I got some pushback when I said, you know, we have to be clear about swing states and how your vote's more consequential. So you do have to decide whether or not you care more about defeating Donald or voting against Hillary. And that's just me trying to be responsible as a host with a large audience. But in actuality, I think that you should make your own decision. I have provided you with the details, the facts, the evidence, and I'm saying you can do what you want to do. Don't let people discourage you. If you want to vote against Hillary Clinton and vote for Jill Stein in a swing state, cool. I'm not going to be against that. Hi, Mike. Just wondering, are you an Oregon native? Yes. Uh, born here, raised here, and I think that's, you know, it's never going to change. I love Oregon. I don't plan on leaving anytime soon. Hey, Mike, I'm wondering, what do you think about the fact that climate change is almost never mentioned, and when it is, it's sort of brushed under the rug? What do we have to do to make progress on this issue? It is very important to me. Also, I love your channel. Very well done. Thank you so much. You know, for me, I've kind of come to the, the sad conclusion that they're not going to cover climate change until we really see some of the most devastating consequences come to fruition, because then they're forced to cover it. So when we see the sea level actually rise and engulf some of these states... I think that's when they're going to start to care. I don't think nothing is going to really get them to uh, cover climate change unless it is a moneymaker. And that's what happens when you're in a capitalist society. Everything is based on money and profit. So unless covering climate change is going to get eyeballs to the channel and the TV screen, news channels are not going to cover it. And that's unfortunately a sad fact. And I, and I want for nothing more than for me to be wrong about this. Dear Mike, if Hillary is voted president this election, what do you think is the likelihood she will win a second term four years from now? Some things to consider are her prior scandals, the likelihood that she won't be up against an opponent like Trump again, and uh, the fact that the next time people won't be voting for her just to see the first female president. You know, that's really difficult to say as of now, I think that in terms of her getting a second term, if she has just a mildly competent Republican opponent, the odds are that Hillary Clinton will be defeated. But... Here's the thing. The Republican Party is in complete shambles, so there is a strong chance that we're going to get another giant idiot like Donald Trump. I mean, who finished in second place? Ted Cruz, someone who's arguably worse than Donald Trump. It's 50-50 at this point. If the Republicans put, back, put forth another maniac, then yes, Hillary Clinton will win. Uh, if they put forth just someone at least somewhat competent, insane, like John Kasich, it's over. She's out. Mike, recently my parents have decided not to vote because they don't like either candidate. I managed to convince my mom to go green and vote for Stein, but my dad still says it's useless. Uh, how should I convince him otherwise? Look, convince him that it's a protest vote. A lot of people, they really hate when you refer to a vote for Jill Stein as a protest vote, but I don't necessarily see it as a negative thing. My vote for Jill Stein isn't essentially a protest vote, but in part it is a protest vote because I'm saying, you know, screw the two parties, screw Hillary Clinton, screw Donald Trump, and there's no bigger middle finger to the establishment and the options that we have in the two-party system than voting for Jill Stein. So, you know, sell it as a protest vote. I know a lot of people hate when, you know, like Bernie Sanders called a vote for Jill Stein a protest vote and people got offended by that. But I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing that it's a protest vote. I, I like the fact that my vote for Jill Stein is also a protest vote in addition to me just voting for her based on, you know, my conscience. So that's all the questions we have. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. If you too would like to participate, join us on Candid. You could search for the Humanist Report group and uh, download the app on iOS and Android. I'll see you all there.